documentary series, From Colon to Panama, 1912, illustrated with historical photos, postcards, documents, and maps. Chapter 1, Cristobal Colon This publication presents excerpts from the Panama Guide, specifically the chapter entitled From Colon to Panama. This historical work is considered of great importance for the knowledge of what life was like in Panama more than 100 years ago, mainly in the villages and towns located in the old Transistmian Railroad, inaugurated in 1855 and relocated, 1907 to 1912, during the construction of the Panama Canal, opened in 1914. Certain texts of the original publication, 1912, have been edited and some advertising has been included at the end of each section. Historical documents, drawings, photos, postcards, plans and maps, from different sources but related to the content, are incorporated to illustrate the trip from Colon to Panama and the places visited in between. Introduction this guidebook answers most of the questions that I have been asked during the past four years regarding Panama and the Panama Canal. Only a few of the many books on the Panama Canal are reliable, and in my text I have quoted only these, Panama by Albert Edwards, Panama in Porter's Progress of the Nation series, Old Panama by Dr. C. L. G. Anderson, The Panama Government's School History by Sosa and Ars the annual reports of the Isthmian Canal Commission, and the canal record are especially commended to those who wish a deeper knowledge of Panama and the canal than this guidebook can give. John O. Collins, Ancon, 1912 Cristobal, Colon, this city or overgrown village bears the Spanish name of Christopher Columbus, although for many years it was known as Aspinwall, the Panama Railroad officials having chosen to call it by that name. But the Colombian government insisted on Colon, and in 1882 when the French began to fill in the portion of the town near the canal entrance, they called their settlement Cristobal, so the joint town, American and Panamanian, is called Cristobal Colon. A notice handbook of the Panama Railroad, published in 1862, there is a picturesque description of the city of Colon, Aspinwall, which was then at the height of its prosperity as a stopping place for people making the journey to and from California. There were hotels, shops and warehouses, half a dozen steam and sailing vessel lines made it a port of call, and the railroad colony was already firmly established in not unattractive surroundings. The sightseer in Colon should begin where the settlement itself began in 1850, at the north end of the island, known as Colon Beach. On the site where now is being erected the new Washington Hotel, a modern structure of reinforced concrete and hollow tile, the first eating house was built for the railroad employees, and around it grew up the railroad village. The new hotel accommodates 175 people, having 88 bedrooms and contains all the baths, toilet rooms, writing and lounging rooms, dining rooms, kitchen with modern cooking apparatus, electric lights and fans, and other conveniences that distinguish a thoroughly up-to-date hotel. The architecture is of the Spanish mission style modified to suit the local conditions. The grey stone building in modified Gothic style immediately west of the hotel site, is Christ Episcopal Church, which was built by contributions from the Panama Railroad Company and missionary societies. It was dedicated in 1865 and, except for a few years, when it was used as a Colombian arsenal, barracks, and storehouse, has been a place of worship ever since. At first under the jurisdiction of the Protestant Episcopal Church of the United States, its government was changed to the Anglican Church in 1883, when thousands of British Negroes came from the West Indies to work on the canal, and again in 1907 it passed to the American Episcopal Church when the American canal work had been established.
beyond the row of railroad employees' quarters, in the enclosure about half a mile west of the church, also fronting on Lemon Bay, is the Panama Railroad and Dismian Canal Commission Hospital with 525 beds, and modern means for treating all kinds of illness. This hospital has grown from a small field hospital established by the Panama Railroad Company in 1851. Immediately beyond it is the quarantine station at which persons from plague and fever ports must remain to complete their period of six or seven days isolation before being allowed to cross the isthmus or enter the city of Colon. On the beach between the site of the hotel and the piers of the Panama Railroad Company is the office headquarters of the railroad whence the superintendent and his subordinates direct the conduct of the railroad and steamship line on the isthmus. Adjoining the line of piers immediately south of the office building and the hotel site is the Colon Freight Office of the Railroad Company. It was built in 1864 and rebuilt after the fire in 1885. This building has also served as quarters from time to time for Colombian troops, and within its walls in November, 1903, were concentrated the American residents of Colon and the half-hundred Marines sent there to defend them from the massacre threatened by the commander of the Colombian troops that had recently landed on the Isthmus. Other buildings in Colon worthy of mention are the masonry structures of the Panamanian government, one a public school, and the other a municipal building, the frame building on the water, front near the railroad station, which is the home of the Strangers Club, the brick house adjoining it, in which the Ismian poet, J. K. Gilbert, wrote his poems, now collected in the book, Panama Patchwork, and the Concrete Block Railway Station. Owing to encouragement, by the railroad company, which owns nine-tenths of the land in Colon, there is a distinct tendency on the part of merchants and others to build concrete structures. A Masonic hall is to occupy the block immediately back of the commissary building, the railroad is erecting a three-story building on Front Street, which is to be used as stores and living apartments, and other concrete buildings are in process of erection. Across the canal zone line in the village of Cristobal are the cold storage and manufacturing plants of the commissary system, a modern fire station house, Cristobal, and the old French canal headquarters, on Cristobal Point. One of these buildings was built for Charles de Lesseps, son of the canal promoter, and was occupied by him and other canal officials during the French regime. It is now used as offices for the commissary system and other branches of the canal administration. Terminal docks, construction work in progress in front of Cristobal is that for a system of five piers enclosing ten docks which will be the Atlantic terminal docks for the Panama Canal. Each dock will be capable of berthing ships 1,000 feet long and the space between the piers, 300 feet, will be sufficient to allow two ships to enter undock at one time without danger of collision.